Hey guys, so this video is going to be a follow-up on the NHX 10K. This is a 48 volt split phase inverter. It can output 10,000 watts, so you're somewhere around 5,000 watts per leg. Although the testing I did in the last one showed you can go a little over that, so you can be around 6,000 watts. This inverter is outdoor rated. It also has four separate solar inputs. Each input can take up to 500 volts open circuit and 15 amps. So I had a lot of different messages, emails, comments, asking me to do another video on the inverter. A lot of the questions were just, how do you like the inverter? How well has it been working for you? So one of the plans here, aside from what I'm gonna show you in the video here, is just to keep cycling this inverter. So I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna be doing that in just a minute. But yeah, there's a lot of people interested in this inverter because of the price point. So you've got something that's a hybrid inverter here, so it can interact with the grid. You can also feed back to the grid or do zero export. So yeah, it has a lot of different features. And at this price point, yeah, I mean, that's a lot of people are interested in it for that reason. Also, it has a pretty small form factor for a 10,000 watt inverter. If any of you haven't seen the previous video I did on the inverter, it might be good to check that out also. So let me show you guys how I'm gonna be cycling the inverter here to keep testing it. So I have the EG4 18K PV powering my house loads right now. So what I'm thinking of doing is hooking the smart load from this into the NHX 10K. So I've wired this into the smart load here into an RV cord. So what I've done, I've added some ethernet cable here to give me some extension on the CTs because I needed to put them into the wiring cabinet of the 18K PV. So the plan is with this, it's to try to get the NHX to zero out all of my loads on the 18K, which I think it should be able to pretty easy. So I can actually wire this a little cleaner, but for testing purposes, this is hooked up into the, these CTs from the NHX are hooked up here into the power from the 18K PV. So this is essentially what the NHX is going to consider grid right here. So we'll see, we'll turn the smart port on and see if the NHX can actually help the 18K PV with loads. Right now it's running around 4,000 watts or so, if you guys can see here, 4,300 watts. So let's see if we can take some of that off of it. We'll turn the smart load on here. So this is the other end of that 50 amp cord coming from the 18K PV's output and we'll lock it in here. And you can see we've got power to it now. So this is going to be supplying power to the NHX, but the goal being that the NHX is then going to backfeed this here to be able to cover loads on the 18K PV. It worked, check that out. The loads on the 18K PV, we've got zero watts. Let's go over and see what it looks like on the NHX. So we're feeding 5,600 watts back to the 18K PV and clearing the loads with that. So we're zeroing out the loads on the 18K PV. This is something I actually tried to do in my last video, but I couldn't figure it out then. But after seeing Adam DeLay do it on his video there, do the zero export thing, it wasn't too difficult. I'll actually show you guys. Anyway, here is how you get to it here. You're gonna go into settings. all ones and then you can see here we've got advanced mode is disabled self-consumption is enabled and that right there it actually comes as a default on the unit like this so it's set up to have self-consumption here in other words not backfeed the grid but stay within your main panel there so all your loads would be covered with this inverter up to the point that it can cover them of course so to 10,000 watts and I didn't mention it before in my review on these batteries, but they have both RS-45 and CAN, and they can communicate with both at the same time. I just think this is so cool. It is zeroing out all of my loads, and all the solar is going to top the batteries off right here. So I have 98%, so it's just gonna top them off. We have 6,000 something watts going into the batteries right now. I am gonna have to keep fiddling with it though. I noticed that there was some different readings here than I might have expected. I did see the five kilowatts that I was sending to the 18K PV, but I saw some coming from grid or from battery. I think it was showing nine kilowatts from the battery or something like that. I'm wondering if my CTs were backwards or at least one of them was. So I'll have to look at that. And I know you can get odd readings from 
if you don't have line one on line one matching up with the CTs. But it did function the way I wanted it to. So yeah, I don't know, I'll take a look. I might even make a little follow-up video or a short or something on that part. So I wanted to show you guys, I have the charge verter hooked up here to the communication cable on the RS-485. The CAN is going to the NHX. The RS-485 is going down here to the charge verter. And we do have communication with that battery. We're all the way down to 20 something percent by now, but yeah. Cool. One thing I did note in the last one was how easy it is to go through all the settings. The one kind of confusing setting is this here. So if you needed zero export, you would think you would do this here. Uh, but if you enable that, then somehow it cancels out the things on the left. So anyway, this is how to do self-consumption. But also there's advanced settings and you can do time of use. This is where you pick your charging priority, so you can do grid charge enabled, PV charge, or battery first. These are parallel settings here. Here it allows you to pick between RS-45 and CAN, and lithium or lead acid. There's some grid parameters here you can set, and you can actually go in here, and it's even more detailed. These are the generator settings here. These actually control the dry contacts inside the inverter there. So if you have an auto start on your generator, it can kick it on. So you can see here how tight the wiring space is. I mentioned this in my last video. So this first one here is grid. So this right here is where I was feeding or back feeding from this right here through that 50 amp RV plug. And the second one here is the output. And the third is the smart port. And it's evening now. Not much chance to be able to charge with the solar to get these batteries charged back up. You can see here I'm only bringing in 270, 280 watts on PV1. So as soon as the sun comes up in the morning, we'll get these batteries charged right back up. So I didn't quite get enough sun today to be able to charge these back up. So I am going to start charging them with the charge verter here. I have it set to 100 amps. So Right now it's ramped up to 60 something. So I'm actually just gonna be transferring the power from one set of batteries that I have to these batteries. And I am wired into this breaker box which goes into a larger one to be able to test loads. But what I wanna test now, I'm actually going to put the output wires here over into the other port there, the smart port, so we can test that here. All right, I got them switched over. It's much easier when you have that real flexible, fine-stranded wire with ferrules on it. Much easier to be able to put into these terminals. And they're both charging. Both the batteries are charging around 50 amps. So it shouldn't be too long to where I can test this here. So this is what they call their smart port here. This is the auxiliary load. So right now it's set on 100% and 50%. That's what the factory settings are, which makes sense because once your batteries get up to 100%, you can start charging an EV or something with it. I am gonna have to adjust it though, just to be able to test that output. So I've changed the auxiliary load state of charge on to 10%, so should be on now. I heard a click and off at 0%. So now the smart load, but you could set it for whatever you want, like I said, but yeah, now the smart load should be on. So with those parameters set, we should have output power. So I'm going to switch the breaker on here and then I'll go check over at the other sub panel I have. All right, so I've got my heat gun plugged into L1 here. Yep, it works. So that is the auxiliary output. That is so cool. So I don't think it's necessarily a must, but it's neat that they have that extra output. And a lot of the hybrid inverters, the high-end inverters, are moving in that direction. I don't see any option to set it off of voltage, though. I saw some discussion on the forum about that, so I don't know. I, all I see is state of charge, so if you had a DIY pack or something like that, I'm not sure it would work. And if they did have a DIY pack, worst case, they could just buy a battery that does communicate, like these MK Energy batteries, or they could install a VMS that would communicate like a Seplos or something like that.
Yeah, overall, I like this inverter. I think it was neat that I could get zero export working with another inverter. Again, most people won't be using it that way. They're gonna be using it on their main panel. And for those people that don't necessarily want to install a critical loads panel, but want to have an inverter that can help power house loads, then this inverter can do that with the zero export feature. And yeah, that auxiliary load or smart load option is a nice plus also. So like I said, the most common question I get on the inverter here is just how well does it work overall? So that's my plan here is to just push the inverter to its limits day after day just to see if I can see any issues. And I do keep an eye on the solar forum also to keep tabs on all the different inverters I test. I plan on doing the firmware updates for the unit here when I get a chance soon. So I've had multiple requests for a comparison between this and the 18K PV. And that's sort of a tough one really because it's not an apples to apples comparison. There is some comparisons when you're talking about time of use settings and smart loads. So they both have those features. The NHX though is not able to AC couple. I mean, technically you can, but it's not designed for it. So if you don't have anywhere to put that excess power, then it shuts the inverter down. But the 18K PV and the 12K PV both have that option. Actually, I think as of a couple days ago, the 6000 XP can do that also. But you can do net metering with both different inverters there, the 18K PV and this. And they both have that self-consumption option, the zero export option. The rated output or continual output of the inverters though is gonna be much different. You've got 2000 watts difference between the 18K PV and this. And then in the summer with the 18 KPV, I will routinely run over that 12 kilowatt output. So I'll be at 14,000 watts for a minute or more sometimes. So it has an extended surge on there that lasts for quite a bit. It does a great job with inductive loads also. The NHX here is not gonna run much over that 10 kilowatts. I did test some of that in my last video on this inverter. On the other hand though, it did a great job with inductive loads. So this can actually start up some large loads. It didn't have an issue. The monitoring software that come with both of these inverters are vastly different. Really do not care for the monitoring software that came with the NHX. But like I said though, a lot of people are using Solar Assistant with it. And so they're not even gonna need the initial software that came with this inverter. With the 18K PV, it came with monitoring software and it does a great job on its own. But even with those Lux Power units, a lot of people use Solar Assistant with those also. And there's other things too, like the EG4 units have rapid shutdown capability. This does also, but for the array, the EG4 units can shut down the batteries also if you have the right batteries for that. And then I probably should have led with this, but there is quite a bit of price difference between this unit and an 18K PV. Some of it is gonna come down to preference either way, what brand they wanna go with or what style of inverter. And the NHX is quite a bit cheaper when you're looking at that. The 18K PV has a 200 amp pass through though, and this does not. So a lot of people will run their main grid power straight through the 18K PV, all 200 amps. The 18K also comes with built-in breakers. So that would be all your input output breakers and the DC battery breaker as well. So like I said, it's a give and take, it's a balance. And is there room for both on the market? Absolutely, yeah, there's a lot of people that like these units. There's a lot of people that like the EG4 units. So I don't wanna talk your ear off guys, so I'm gonna end with that. I will leave a link in the description below. You guys can check out the manual online if you wanna learn more about this inverter. I'll also put a link to the MK batteries I mentioned. So as always guys, thanks for watching and stay tuned.